The Gulchtal Bridge, near Nechkau, is the Folkland's most famous landmark. It's the world's largest bridge made out of brick and serves as the northern gate to the region. This is where our tour begins. We take the panorama route that runs right under the bridge from Nechkau towards Plauen. It follows the former inner German border. Today, it forms part of a nature reserve. Few signs of a once divided Germany remain. After 20 kilometers, we reach the town of Plauen. For centuries, Plauen has been known for its world-famous lace. The center of Germany's lace-making trade, there are still more than 40 specialist firms operating here to this day. At this museum, visitors can see firsthand how lace used to be made. With its modern technology and production methods, Plauen became an international leader in lace manufacturing in the early 20th century, leaving the competition behind. Plauen became world leader, putting an end to the Swiss monopoly. Creations by contemporary Plauen designers give visitors insight into the latest developments in lace making and demonstrate the technological innovations within the industry. Plauen didn't just produce for the world market. For a short time it also made world history. This monument commemorates the events of 1989. On October 7th, some 15,000 protesters staged the first large-scale demonstration against the East German regime here in Plauen. That was weeks before the famous demonstrations took place in Leipzig. Physician Frank Grunert was a member of the opposition movement Neues Forum. He attended the demonstration in 1989 and campaigned for the construction of the monument. The people of Plauen are proud that the first large-scale demonstration in East Germany wasn't broken up by armed authorities. We always say that the massive demonstrations that took place in Leipzig two weeks later and spelled the end of the dictatorship, that they might not have taken the course they did without Plauen. We continue our scenic journey, heading towards the town of Machneukirchen. Musical instruments have been built here for some 350 years. Before the Second World War, 75% of orchestral instruments worldwide came from Machneukirchen and the surrounding region. Some 100 firms still operate here, and clients come from all over the world. Udo Kretschmann has been making violins for 40 years. Musicians mostly want the Italian sound. It's the dream of every musician, but it's hard to put into words. The old Italian sound has to be a warm, soft sound that carries well. And the violin makers here in Mark Neukirchen try to reproduce this sound. But only the musicians can judge whether or not we succeed. It appears that they have been succeeding, and for generations, as a trip to the local instrument museum demonstrates. Some 5,000 instruments are on display here. from Mark Neukirchen and the whole world, and from the 17th century to the present day. If you're lucky, 
you might get to hear a pianola from the early 20th century. That's how easy it was to play the piano. <laughs> One last stretch along the panorama route to our last destination, Klingenthal. With its scenic views, the town is also home to instrument builders. But the focus here is on heights. For more than a hundred years, Klingenthal has been a favorite destination for winter sports enthusiasts. Today it's a mecca for ski jumping fans. You can see why at the Folkland Arena. Here, visitors are taken 137 meters up the slope. You need a good head for heights. And once at the top, visitors are treated to the breathtaking view that awaits prospective ski jumpers. Just imagine them jumping from here. You normally only see it on TV. I didn't think it was this high. From this vantage point, visitors looking out beyond the slope can take in almost the entire Folkland region.